Kalaupapa, Hawaii is one of those rare places where the history that began in the 1860s is still alive today. This place has a story to tell that will become even more compelling with time. Located on the rugged north shore of Molokai, the peninsula was home to native Hawaiians for nearly 800 years. Archaeological sites in the form of walls, temples, houses, and fishing shelters are evidence of a once thriving culture. Life changed dramatically here in 1866. The sheer sea cliffs and pounding ocean made this volcanic tongue an inescapable place to isolate Hawaiians who had contracted Hansen's disease, better known as leprosy. Hansen's disease had reached almost epidemic levels among the Hawaiian people. Those were frightening times, both for those afflicted and for those who came forward as kakua, or helpers. One person who courageously stepped forward was a Catholic priest from Belgium named Father Damien de Wooster. He devoted the rest of his life to improving the conditions of the people exiled to this place. Over the years, some 8,000 patients were sent to Kalapapa. History continues to live on here. Although patients have been free to leave Kalopapa since 1969, approximately 50 people remain who suffer the effects of Hansen's disease and have chosen to live out their lives in the community. They provide a link between the past and the present and can best tell the story of Kalopapa. A central part of that story has been Pascal Hall. Built in 1916, Pascal Hall is the largest structure in the community. Until the early 1960s, it was the center for social gatherings and a wide variety of entertainment. The hall was the setting for dances and shows by local artists and famous entertainers and personalities like Edgar Bergen, the Trapp family, Edward G. Robinson, Jack London, and many others. But it was the movies shown with state-of-the-art equipment that provided a regular and valued escape for the patients and staff. To my mind, the Ten Commandments was uh, one of the best pictures that ever came here. And uh... Henry Nolaya Lua came to Kalapapa in 1955. But the Ten Commandments was an outstanding picture because uh, even people from topside Molokai came down. We had a full house in the, in the theater. And uh, the, the film just came here and went back to Honolulu. It didn't go to Molokai. So, you know, uh, those that came down had a treat too because they'd never seen the picture, no? only heard about it. And uh, that was one of the most outstanding pictures, I think, uh, that we've ever seen. And then, of course, after that, we've had you know, uh, some really good pictures coming in, like uh, Ben-Hur and things like that. Because of its special meaning to residents, Pascal Hall was chosen for a major historic preservation project. It presented a daunting challenge because of its size and state of deterioration. The work has been divided into four phases. The first phase began in March 1998 and addressed the serious termite damage to the structural members of the building. The huge hall was jacked up and the damaged sill plates, structural columns, interior diagonal bracing and roof trusses were repaired or replaced. The second phase involved replacing the deteriorated composition shingle roof. This was complicated by its sheer size and the fact that it was so cut up by hips, valleys, and additions. The new roof, now covered with wood cedar shingles, appears as it did in 1916. The third phase will be to restore the exterior sidewalls, windows, doors, ornamental detailing, and to repaint the outside to its original paint color. Phase four will be to restore the interior, the walls, and the ceiling. The benefits of this restoration work are twofold. Pascal Hall will continue to help tell the story of Kalopapa, and Park Service employees will have gained new skills and confidence. Lane Namaka Eha.
this is good because now what I did on the roof, at least I can show people, oh, this is what we did, you know. At least we can show up because nobody did come in here and then put it up for us, you know. And then, you know, they asked us if we wanted to work on Paswa Hall. It gave me an opportunity, you know, to see if I can, you know, learn all these trades. And if I can do it, then hey, we can do it our own down here. Take care of all these older, other structures that we need one day to repair. Kalavaya Gu is a journeyman carpenter for the Park Service. This is one of our, our beach houses. It's one of uh, over 200 historical structures we have um, here in Kalapapa that we need to maintain. And it's, um, the problems that's wrong with this building is, is the same as, as Pasco Hall. It's just a smaller version of it. Um, so normally, the, our procedures for correcting the problems are the same as Pasco Hall. We start off uh, where we, looking, we look at the, uh, the structural deficiencies um, and we, we take care of them. Um, mainly, you know, around the foundation and the, um, the attic, the ceiling, make sure everything is sound up there. From there, we, we move on to penetration areas, um, places where the, the weather can get in, um, places where um, damage is occurring because of the weather, um, so, which is things like um, the baseboards, you know, around this, this apron, um, the, the roof where the weather, you know, water can get in, doorways, windows, things like that. And finally, once we get everything um, structurally sound and weatherproof, then we'll move on to the cosmetic stage. And then you can see from this building here, we're a long ways off from that stage. The, the real benefit of, of Pasco Hall is that it's probably one of our, our biggest and, and most um, ambitious um, projects we've taken. And once we've taken care of something that large and ambitious, all these other little projects are you know, relatively simple. I'm Bernie Weisgerber, an instructor in historic preservation technique, and I find Kalapapa to be truly unique. There's diverse structures here, like a lighthouse, there's a gas station, there's churches, there's even an old grocery store here to repair. We've also got administrative buildings to take care of. But the opportunities here are to deal with wood, termite damage, to deal with masonry. We've got the salt environment here. We've got window repairs. We've got roofing. It's a preservation paradise here. The skills and confidence gained from Pascal Hall will be put to good use within the community. Almost all the buildings in Kalopapa were constructed from 1900 to the 1960s. Most were built in a Hawaiian plantation style, a style that is becoming scarce and more valuable as an historic resource. They all need some type of preservation work. The National Park Service was invited to Kalapapa by the community residents here because the, the residents were afraid that their lifestyle and their community was going to be lost. Establishing a National Historical Park was one alternative that they opted for to preserve their community and the unique lifestyle that the people down here have developed. Those of us that live here now have a a real special opportunity to interact with the former Hansen's disease patients and to learn from them firsthand what life was like here. Not too many years from now, there won't be any patients left to tell the story. And visitors who come here will have to learn the story through other means. These buildings around us and the landscape around us are going to be the physical reminders of what life was like here in Kalapapa, and they're going to be essential for telling that story. These buildings are subject to rapid deterioration in a harsh marine environment and a tropical environment. Termites, wood rot, wind damage, uh, all have severe impacts on these buildings. A Wassa preservation program has begun now and implemented immediately. These buildings won't remain so that the Park Service can tell the story of Kalapapa.